tucked away behind a neat row of tract homes is a compound of homes of a different origin. Is this a world of desert igloos or maybe the set of a Star Wars movie? This is the world of Cal Earth, the California Institute of Earth and Architecture, an organization committed to providing solutions to the human need for shelter through research, development, and education in Earth architecture. Earth architecture is based on using the natural elements of earth, water, air, and fire to provide environmentally sustainable housing. To meet this pressing need, CalEarth develops and educates the public in self-help, environmentally sustainable building designs, houses that anyone can build with their own two hands using locally available earth, sandbags, and barbed wire that meet modern day standards for safety, beauty, energy efficiency, and comfort. This was the vision of CalEarth founder Nader Khalili in his quest to empower the world's poor and refugees to build homes using the earth under their feet. We took a tour of the Cal Earth compound and we'll share here with you some highlights. Um, is because this is really at the very core of everything we teach. I'm going to show you buildings that are beautiful, that have electricity and running water and like a fridge that you can open and look at our ketchup. Um, it's very much a traditional home, you know, we can mm -hmm. do that. But this is at the core of what we teach here. Um, the founder of this site, Nader Khalili, was an architect and he very much did the traditional thing. He helped design parking lot structures. I mean, very boxed in, um, but his dream was to create homes that adhered to certain principles that he believed in as somebody who himself had grown up in poverty and without a proper place to live, without enough space, um, sharing one bedroom with all his siblings. Um, he believed that everyone had the right to be able to build their own home and for that home to be safe and for that home to be comfortable. And that's why we start here, is because a disaster zone is kind of the first, most immediate, most emergency application um, where those principles are so desperately needed. Um, and the fact that this can be put up in one day um, is probably best illustrated by looking at an actual na natural disaster. So my favorite example of that is Haiti because it's really a situation where long-term housing was handled shamefully. Um, the Haiti earthquake was in January of 2010 and 
we are now in, what, June of 2016, so it's been six and a half years. And, um, you know, today, which is six and a half years after that, hundreds of thousands of people are still living in the tents that they passed out in the days and weeks following that natural wow. disaster. And that's, that's crazy because tents aren't made for long-term living. They're not like yurts right. that they passed out. They're disaster relief tents and they've just been degrading with that time. They're getting holes in them, you know, animals, bugs, anything can get into them. Water comes through, ruins food supplies, ruins clothing. It creates mold. It's an unhealthy uh, breathing situation. Mm. It spreads disease very easily. Um, and all of this is just directly related to housing and specifically the amount of time it takes to build a house. So if you have a couple days to two weeks to spend in a section of a disaster area, that's not much time at all to establish long-term housing. That's really all you can do is pass out tents. Well, now we come to this. So if you have a technology like this that can be literally built in one day, if I can build this in one day, if I can teach you how to build this in one day, maybe spend a second day if I have it with you leading a team, make sure that you've really got it, you've got it down, mm -hmm. then I can pass out the materials that we use for this, which is sandbag and barbed wire, just as easily as I can pass out tarp and poles for a tent. Mm -hmm. But okay. instead of a tent, yeah. I'm giving you primarily the knowledge to continue building until you feel like your living situation is adequate. Because other natural disasters happen, you know, funding mm -hmm. runs out, um, there's tsunamis and earthquakes in other parts of the world, we move on, but you know who's really thinking about Haiti still <laughs> is the Haitians that still mm -hmm. don't have homes. Right. Um, and if they had that kind of in their own hands, that, that knowledge, that's something that can't be taken away and can't be taxed, it's just they have the solution to their own problems. So that's why we start here. Mm -hmm. um, This is the fire village, village number two. Okay. Um, and this one is, it's very much like the emergency shelter village, but each of these buildings here have kind of a secondary function or an additional room attached. Um, so we'll explore those in a bit, but this is actually where I'm gonna talk to you about how these structures are built. Um, and there's two really important factors of that. There is geometry and then there's um, material. So I'm gonna start with geometry because that's kind of a fun one to do and I'm actually going to use you guys um, for like a physical demonstration. Oh, okay. Physics 101 that you probably already know, but it's kind of fun to do hands-on and get a physical feel for mm -hmm. how it works and why. So I need you guys to stand like here and here. I guess whoever's shorter should be higher up. Okay. Um, Let me take this and you guys are going to hold hands um, like you're getting married, kind of out like this. No, like we're... we're get a good grip on each other. <laughs> Um, and what you're going to do is you're kind of making a box with your bodies right now, so you're going to be very much straight up and down, arms straight out, kind of making a 90 degree here. Okay. Um, and I'm going to lean on you a little bit here, mm -hmm. and it shouldn't be painful, I'm just <laughs> leaning on you so that you can kind of feel how that weight, that force would be distributed. And this can be physical weight, like a snow falling on a house or a tree falling on a house, mm -hmm. um, but you also have to remember that kind of constant force that pulls things down. This is okay. gravity and time as well. So I'm just oh, gonna lean on you a bit here. <laughs> you guys ready? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, you guys feeling which muscles you're using? Mm -hmm. I know it's very obvious at this point which muscles you're using. Mm -hmm. Where are you feeling it in your bodies? In my arms, basically. But, yeah, uh, that's mm -hmm. how force kind of falls in yeah. a box. 
the walls are freestanding yeah. and this part has to be very strong because all mm -hmm. the force sits right, right there. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and you see that even in like ancient ruins, you'll see the walls are still standing and the roof has collapsed in, mm -hmm. or like Greek pillars, many Greek pillars are standing that were once entire buildings. Yeah. Um, so now yeah. I'm gonna have you do the same thing, hold hands, mm -hmm. um, and we're just gonna make the smallest change. You guys are going to bring those hands up and kind of make a bit of an arch like I'm gonna go through. And okay. it's going to be a little bit pointier than an arch because you guys have bones in your arms. Mm -hmm. um, but it's the same general principle at work. So if you make that kind of stiff, like you're okay. making an arch, I'm going to put that weight on you. In fact, I'm going to put more weight on you this second time. Mm -hmm. And you guys can let me know how that feels. So. <laughs> this this half is collapsing. So. <laughs> Wait, I, I put a lot more weight on okay. you the second well, time. But but you get the you get the, the, the yeah. ball. Okay, yeah. wait, try it, try it. Put more okay. on. All put right. more weight on. This is what I can do, guys. Oh, good. <laughs> like okay. it's a lesson you learned. Got, you got that down. So we're yeah, definitely yeah, stronger the second time. Yeah. So um, and you can feel that it's just it, obviously it's the same material, right? Because yeah. the material is yeah. you guys. Yeah. Um, but just moving that center point up changes the way that force um, mm -hmm. reacts to you guys as a geometric shape. Uh, when you guys go up, force isn't kind of karate chopping down the middle, yeah. it's running down this way like water. Mm -hmm. Your arms are braced by your back, your back is braced by your legs, your legs are braced by the ground. So there's a good amount of that force that I'm putting on you mm -hmm. that just goes straight through. Mm -hmm. And the more a shape is a perfect arch, um, the more it goes into what's called compression, um, and when you hit that perfect compression, that perfect shape, then almost all of the force is running off the object. Okay. So Ooh. these structures aren't resistant at all. They don't need to be made of a strong material because these structures are at rest. It's like they're piles. They're like strategic piles. They don't know that they haven't collapsed already because okay. they've okay. gone into compression. And I have one more demonstration for that. So I made you hold an egg for me at the beginning of this. If you can give me the egg. No this is just a regular egg. egg. It might actually be a rotten egg, so <laughs> thanks for holding it in your white pocket. Um, <laughs> Good thing it didn't smash in my pocket. I know, I was worried. But you can see, like, everyone knows eggshells are not super strong. You know, mm -hmm. it's not, it's definitely not the material that's creating strength here. Yeah. And yet, an egg is two arches. It's an arch this way and it's an arch this way. So what you can do, and you can do this with an egg at home, ideally one that's fresh, <laughs> or you can hard boil one too is you uh, interlock your fingers like that and then hold the egg so that, and you can feel it in your hands, that yeah. you're putting force at the very tips, the okay. two tips of the egg. And I'm going to try and break this egg. I'm going to really put my force into it. Um, ah, okay, <laughs> that's what I've got. I'm not going to injure myself on it. But you can see regular egg and all of this strength um, is just from the shape of it. I literally cannot break this egg. Okay, let me see. <laughs> Did you Wait, you want to hold it the right you way, so take off your me? ring. Okay. Take off your rings. Oh, I can't. You can do it. I don't want egg on me. No, it's not going to get it on you. No, I did, it, uh, I did it in the demonstration and I didn't. I, I did it in the... the so same. interlock okay. your fingers because that helps you put equal force on both sides. Okay. I'm going to put that tip there, that tip there, and as you close on it, you'll feel if you're sturdy. So if you, it doesn't matter how much pressure you put on it, it won't break as long as you're holding it firmly. If it slips, it can break. It's still an egg. You're putting pressure on it? Yes. There's <laughs> pressure on that egg. Yeah. <laughs> I am not going to break it on me. It won't break. I can't break it. See my okay. muscles? <laughs> Very interesting. All right, good thing. It's a little easier to try at home when you're about to take a shower and you don't care about your clothes. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is just a regular egg, and, and again, the geometry, yeah. which is, this is all relevant, why all of these buildings are this shape. Yeah. I'm going to make an arch, um, and it is going to be a brick arch, just made with bricks and pebbles, but there's going to be no, nothing gluing it together, no sort of mortar or cement in between it, and it's just going to stay up because of compression, which is what we were talking about earlier. So I'm starting out with these four triangle-shaped bricks. Um, you see I've just kind of, they're all about the same size. I've put them together so that I can prop this up um, under my form. 
uh, the bricks that prop up your form are called shims. Um, that's something that I think. And I'm just going to start building on either side. Um, so what I'm going to do to make my bricks follow the path of the form is I'm going to um, put pebbles underneath, and I don't think I'll need two for this first brick. Maybe I will. Uh, at least two, so that it doesn't... If you put just one, sometimes it'll kind of seesaw. Um, so I'm putting at least two between each one. I just take the brick, pick the flatter of the two edges, uh, slide it in, get that tilt that I want, and then slide in some pebbles until I find a couple of the right size, move on to the next one. I know you guys are eager to see if this is going to stand or fall. So am I. So let's see. Um. There we go. And... Oops. <laughs> Ideally, don't knock down your arch when you take down the form. And you see that it stands primarily because this inside arch is very true to the shape of that form that we have. I can actually put this next to it if you want to see them together. I'm a scientist. Recycling takes a team. Why don't you let me and me help you out? Everyone plays a part. Don't trash. I love taking stuff apart and building new things out of it. What could be treasure? Pal's my most advanced android. <gasps> this is awesome. You haven't seen anything yet. Give your cardboard box another life. Recycle. So um, this is where we kind of, I bring you in here to sit down and relax. I know it was really hot outside. Um, and part of what's so nice about this structure is that it's not only um, nice and shady, but it's also even cooler than that. And that's for a couple of reasons. Um, so the first one is probably just the thickness of the walls. So you're getting a lot of your coolness just from the thermal mass of this. And that means that it takes the sun all day to soak through. And by the time it finally does, it's nighttime, no more sun, and so you're not really feeling it come through the yeah. walls like you do in a lot of houses. Yeah. Um, but the second thing is really cool, um, and I like to brag about it because it's just the coolest thing ever, um, and it's that mysterious entity over there. So it looks like a window that like leads to a closet, um, and I do children's tours and they always ask me, like, why can't you get into the closet? Um, but it's not a closet, it's what's called a wind scoop. And a wind scoop is like a chimney that's flopped over at the top so that wind, as it passes, gets caught inside of that scoop um, and comes into this large kind of dark space, again, with that thermal mass. It's already a cooler area. Um, the wind is already cooler because it's been moving, and so it kind of collects this slowly chilling pocket of air until you end up with this just mass of refrigerated air. If you open that and open a window to the opposite of that, um, then it creates that vacuum, it sucks all of the cold air into the structure, and you can drop the temperature in here on a hot day 5 to 10 degrees in 5 to 10 minutes, mm -hmm. which is <laughs> faster than my air conditioning works. And what's amazing yeah. about it is that it's not air conditioning, you know, it's, it's passive cooling, it's just the wind yeah. and preparation. And that's one of the things that's so cool about building your own house, is you get to kind of 
integrate these technologies with it if that's something that you're interested in and um, save a ton on air conditioning. So this structure is really nice and in large part it's due to that. Um, and then of course you'll notice with this one, so in some of the earlier ones there were kind of like little pocket rooms coming off of the main room and I don't point them out as much because they're very small, they're more storage areas or in a couple of them they're sleeping areas. Um, but in here you really start to see the potential that those little pockets have for becoming rooms and the word for those, those smaller domes coming off of larger domes is apps, A-P-S-E. So this apps over here is a bedroom, um, and you can see in there it's super cozy. Um, we call them bed wombs because um, they're not rooms like for walking around and doing stuff in there, just like wombs just for sleeping in. Um, and then your living space is very much this central area. Um, you've got a kitchen over here, a bathroom over there, and this entire house is hooked up where um, you can turn on the lights and you can turn on the water. So this is, you know, meant to be a model of a small, you know, potential apartment. Um, and we actually sell the blueprints for this one, um, but the blueprints we sell are for two of these attached together to meet the legal requirements for square footage. Okay. Um, this one cost us a little bit more than $9,000, um, and more than 5000 of that was just the doors and windows. Interesting. All right, so we started out with a disaster relief, and I told you all about the principles of our institute, and then we kind of moved on up a little bit, and some of them had like little rooms coming off of them, and then we saw the little small apartment, that's where we just were. Um, and now we're kind of at the whole shebang. So this one is a full house, it's kind of got everything that you can cram into a house, this one has, uh, to show that you can. Um, so we uh, fondly call this one our veggie burger. <laughs> because it's a shape that people are familiar with, but the substance is a little bit better. Um, and it's got everything you can think of in a home. So this one is a three-bedroom, two-bathroom, two-car garage with a full kitchen, with full cabinetry, full HVAC system, radiant floor heating, everything you can think of. Let's go inside. Here we go. This is our living room coming in. I'm going to bring you this way to the kitchen. And you'll see that these first three main living rooms are all kind of one flowing space. So you're not wasting any hallway space moving from one to the next. So here's our kitchen. Gorgeous, like I said, full cabinetry. The fridge works. Um, this way is our dining room. So as I move through here in an S shape, you see all one big room. Um, and we don't have a table in here at the moment, but this is where we dine. Now as we come down this hallway, you see that we've divided up the space into the personal areas with drywall. Um, so there's a bedroom back there, which we use as a meeting space, um, but it's a lot more private. It's set back from these main areas, as well as our first bathroom. You can move over here, see our second bedroom, as well as some storage space right here. We've got closets. Um, and throughout the house, we have these little nooks and cubbies where we keep um, a lot of our art and ceramics that are made on site, some of them even with the same material that was used to make the house. And our master bedroom down here with our second bathroom. Another full walk-in closet, as well as just a regular closet, um, and the master bedroom down here. So you see, and I can even let some light in if you'd like it. It's a very beautiful space. Thank you.
filming 